Hello, and welcome to the Black Mind Games Podcast, episode 370, I don't know. Mm. Josh, tell me the number of the podcast. Uh, I can do that quickly here. Josh, you got uh, like five seconds. I can't, because... Uh, five, four, oh, you, shit. You got, uh, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got 30, okay, five seconds, Josh, five seconds. Uh, Google Drive, it's loading. 378. Uh, yeah, 378. Oh my god, Alan. Just robbing the points there. It literally loaded as he said it, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> whatever. There it is. I'm gonna overlay some like music time to music or something like that over top of that. Or I'll be too lazy and then not do it. <laughs> ah. Mm. Yes, yeah, 379, 378. Who fucking cares? Uh join me this week, Josh. Also join yep. me this week is Alan. Hello. I'm Jeff, your illustrious host who hates everything and is currently debating about buying more Lego so he can get one set that is a gift. All right. So how do you want to start this this week? Because I've got a thing to talk about. Jeff's got a thing to talk about. And I have two. <laughs> Josh, Josh played games this week. So let's start with Josh. Uh, I did play a game called Broken Reality. Broken reality. Uh, it's not necessarily a game, more of like an experience you can walk through. Man, I'm uh, so it's fun. <laughs> it's it's definitely a thing it, you look at and this what a developer made this game, quote unquote. I, I think the term I've heard from someone else is an egg like where it's basically you just walk through this area and you don't have much to interact with, if anything. Uh, but in this one, you can take pictures and you're trying to get enough. It's this weird schmozzle of like talking, on, like you hear this. You see, you read people's Internet speak and it's all freaking, you know, hammy and shit and whatever. Yeah. And all these people are represented by these avatars that are just like blue mannequins. And of course, the game looks weird as shit. And it's all about, uh, yeah, you walking through this space of time and you're trying to get enough likes to keep moving on to the next area that also looks really fucking cool and stylistic and everything. So uh, it sounds like to me, like it's one of those RC fartsy games that the FBI makes in order to like, you know, get a bunch of people to do something crazy. That's what it sounds kinda, like, like to me. Kind of. Uh, actually, there's <laughs> there's more to this game that I'm starting to realize because I'm now just clicking through the uh uh, the, the store page and I'm like wait there's some screenshots I haven't seen here before so I'm like oh I should probably go back and figure out what those were mm. actually the game's super cheap right now it's only five bucks uh, here I'll, I'll give you the store page URL you can take a quick peek at it I'm just... it's very I think the term for what the, the game's looks is vaporwave yeah. which huh. I mean it's, it can be hit or miss huh I'm going to look at the trailer. You say Vaporwave, eh? Yeah, it's a lot of uh, uh, freaking neon colors, a lot of uh, some Japanese lettering for no reason, uh, a lot of hot pink all over the place. Um, whatever reason, you're set on a beach, because that's Vaporwave, apparently, uh. and water, and you're probably also on a... Uh, uh, what was it? Using tile floors for you know that water aesthetic. Yeah, like it's it's all that. It's water. I'm surprised. You, of, I'm surprised you haven't played Dave the Diver. I could probably. Uh, what's it called? Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver. Oh, I. But this you know game what? looks I've, sick. I've seen that crop up on my news feed because of Steam, and I'm like, oh, this actually kind of looks neat. Wait, hold on. Is this game a part of a series? What, Dave the Diver? No, Broken Reality. Oh, the Broken Reality. Probably. Huh. Uh, I'm not, sh not sure if it is part of the series. It's from 2018. So, yeah, it's it's definitely an established thing. It's, it might be from a same developer of, a, of something else. Hmm. Similar to games that you played. Well, it has one game I actually like, so... <laughs> Fucking I know this uh, is the worst. 
Yeah, like the only reason of me playing Broken Reality was because I think I saw a video <sighs> Vine Sauce play the itch.io version of this game. Oh, God. And, and the thing was like, oh, he <laughs> of course, he did all the things and whatever. But of course, being a streamer, he either blinds a thing that he's meant to do or he does something else entirely because he's a different person from you. Hmm. Uh, but from like me re going through all the different things of checking out each level and checking out all the different scenery and whatever it, it was like oh man I, I this is so neat and like whatever this per this world this guy crafted and uh artsily done it looks all good it, uh, everything looks good no matter what angle you're looking for uh looking at it yeah and uh yeah like uh it's uh also uh, a quote from the steam page is a 3d prodigy of the internet which it's which is pretty accurate. Um, some of the abilities you get in the game actually are uh, you get a camera which takes pictures of the scenery. But if you take the right spot, if you take a picture at the right spot, you get a bunch of likes for doing that and get the, the cool photo. I like There's another one. I got to say, I like the aesthetic of this game a lot more than most of the games I've looked at. I would say for vaporwave games that have that vaporwave aesthetic, this definitely looks better than a lot of them. Yeah. Just simply because it like over time, your eyes can just be like, oh, fuck, what am I staring at? I feel like I'm looking at a blur. Yeah, it, 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 it definitely has that unique art style that doesn't look like, uh, pardon my French, trash. <laughs> yep. And I especially like the kind of South Park mechanics because it looks like, and you can probably tell me if I'm right or wrong, it looks like to me like they're, you're collecting likes and that's the main form of progression. Yes, it's very bare bones progression. Why would anyone uh, do that? I don't know, but OK. Again, again, the way the game kind of stories itself, when you log into this area, quote unquote, it, everyone says, oh, you have to be, you know, get enough likes to get anywhere. Just like kind of kind of if you're trying to be an influencer or whatever. And yeah, like the game literally when the game says that it literally means you have to get enough likes to get anywhere because you have you get uh, tools that like, let you like grapple hook to certain locations so you can get to other locations that look cool. You get a sword that chops up all the malware pop ups that happen uh, that pop up sometimes that hmm. block your path and you get, that samurai sword cuts down all the malware, which is pretty, pretty rad. Uh, and yeah, it's just like an experience of vaporwave <laughs> uh, locales. Mm. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I, I give it a 10 out of 10. Yeah. It's although uh, I'll tell you right now, it's on sale for five bucks Canadian. Actually, four dollars and 37 cents Canadian. Well, that's convenient. I don't have the money, Josh. <laughs> I have to oh, wait you... until the credit card comes. <laughs> My replacement credit card. Okay, this is a fun story. You have you have to get a replacement credit card? No. I don't. Okay. So, you know how family members will get you gifts? And uh -huh. instead of buying you, like, something nice or thoughtful, they'll get you these gift credit cards. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they get you these gift credit cards, and they're like, okay, great. So I'm like, okay, I'll register it. Everything will be good. I'll buy some games on the Steam sale, and that will be what I want to do. Okay. okay. And that was, my, that was my grand plan. I was big-brained here. So I go set it all up. Everything's going good. And I'm, like, trying to purchase it, and it goes, no, you can't register it. So I call, and I'm like, okay. I try registering it again. Doesn't work. Try registering again. Doesn't work. Try registering again. Doesn't work. Contacting the website. They hang up on me and tell me I'm a piece of shit. Uh, basically, they were like, oh, you clearly don't know how to do this. And I'm like, no, I'm actively trying to do this. You have a 504 on your website. Why the fuck do you have a 504 on your website? I don't know. But you guys should fix this shit. So I'm trying to buy this. And eventually I go to a website and eventually the car just air out. It freaks out and has a hissy fit. So I'm like, great. So I call them again. I think I get the same guy. And I'm like, look, I've been trying to register this thing for about an hour. 
You guys are not helping me. What the fuck? Oh, well, we'll just replace your card. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do next time is I'm debating about Fire Emblem Engage or actually buying stuff I need from a store. Um, or just buying a Steam card and calling it a day. And I'm leaning towards just buying a Steam card and calling it a day. Ah, yeah. Yeah, fuck vanilla. <laughs> That's what I say. So... I I need to wait. I can't buy anything. I want to pay off some stuff, get some stuff going. So that's my plan. Ah, uh, Alan. Ha. Huh. Speaking of great and wonderful plans, can we talk about huh. Velma, which has not gone to a, of the plan at all? Hey, so. Initially, I actually tried watching, and I watched about five minutes, and I gave up. It was that bad, eh? And then... Uh-huh. EFAP saved me. Oh, boy. <laughs> EFAP watched the first two episodes in full. Mmm. Well, mostly full. They cut out, like, a chaff. Um, and uh, normally when I watch EFAP, I can get a fucking laugh and shit out of it when they're watching bad shit. Or they're just watching stuff that's just really not good. Mm -hmm. Um, the majority of this stuff was, wow, that's a thing. Wow, that happened. There was, like, nothing of, like, any substance there for the show. And, like, he, like, Mahler's like, we're not doing any more of this. And, like, some of the people were like, are you sure you don't want to do He's like, no, there's nothing here. There, there's nothing to talk about in any meaningful manner because it's, like, it's, it's such, like, I, here's the thing, like, I've already had, like, a couple dozen conversations about Velma, Velma with a couple people. Mm -hmm. Um... A good example. Uh, it's it seems it's written to be like spiteful towards the source material. Um, it, it's like angry about the fact of like what they're like. It, the first episode has like a full, like, I think, like four minute opening part where it's just fifteen year old girls in the showers. I mean, they're, they are just getting into high school, by the way. I mean, that just sounds creepy. There. Uh, yes, it is. Um, yeah. Then you have a bunch of, like, all these weird things that happen that don't make any logical sense to what kind of world it is. Um, they fucking emasculate Fred and Shaggy nonsense. Oh, sorry, not Shaggy. If, well, if it was they Shaggy. They emasculate Fred. No, no, they emasculate uh, Shaggy, too. Uh, Norville, Shaggy, oh. um, is a massive simp to the point where he would actually go out of his way to sell kidneys to get a date with Velma. What? Yeah. Um, he, uh, he's constantly belittled. He over, it, like, uh, it's such the, it's the worst. It, it's all the worst things that people would want from a sh this show. All wrapped up into, like, this little pile of things that happened. Uh, to make it even worse, um, every character that you could get something interesting out of, which is Velma, uh, She's just this mean, snarky, arrogant, pretentious brat who, like, even when people are being nice to her, it's she's super cynical, and everything that she says is either referential or a fucking sting or a, like, a, po or a, or a poisoned barb of a statement. Um, so, like, men and Kaylee? Uh, we're not bringing up the, we're not bringing up the original creator. We're just talking about the show. Okay. Um, Art style, it's a whatever art style. It's kal but, like, I think the best thing about the show was the, the like, the terror flashback sequences that she has. Mm. Mint, perfect, really good. I really like that choice of direction. I'm not even mad. I actually genuinely like the look of that direction of, like, that art style. Um, uh, they, they massacred my boy, who is Freddy. Fred they Jones. They uh, ruined a lot of characters, it looks They ruined like. everyone. I, uh, Shag, uh, Scooby isn't even in the show, as far as I can tell, because I only watched two episodes. No, Scooby's in the show. Uh, we don't know. That, that that thing I talked about with the, the, like, people have been talking about, like, the black chick being named Scooby, oh, that's yeah. unconfirmed right now, as far as I've, as far as I've heard. Uh, if they do that... Uh, that implies a lot of things. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> then you have... Uh, but, like... Everyone's just these spiteful, mean characters who are just like unadulteratingly the worst people in the world. And I don't mean that like, oh, I 
oh, it's whatever. They're just people. No, I mean, like, no, this is, these are terrible human beings. Like, holy <laughs> shit, dude. Like, hell, uh, when Fre Freddy gets arrested at the end of the first episode for the crime he didn't commit, clearly, um, he's in his own house. Velma breaks in, accuses him of a thing. He goes to grab a checkbook, and two cops enter the house and shoot him in the, in the, uh, in the ankles or in the knees. So, like, what? bit of a thing. So, so the logical process of this situation is Velma broke into his house, so she's trespassing. <sighs> Technically, the cop should have shot her. Um, additionally, there's all anything against Freddy is super surface. Uh, sur like, if this was actually like a mystery investigation show, this would actually be like a moment of like, I, like the way I would have done it. Like, I actually want to talk about this because the way I would have done, like Velma and the gang all getting together and becoming the mystery Friends. gang, um, as I would have done them in co uh, just entering college. Shaggy is a local who doesn't go to college, but they all end up like meeting because like they all, like they all frequently. Like, Fred isn't even like Fred's like not a varsity athlete, but like uh, like a like a major like a player and stuff like but, that. Like he's he's a capable football player. He's yeah, but fairly, wasn't like, that the thing? Like no, they no. were all college students. Uh, back in the original series, yes. Well, yes. they were a little bit a little bit older than a college student. It, it's weird. It, they could be as young as high school, as old as college. So it depends upon how you want to look at it. Um, but. This is what I would do. I would make Fred like some. He's there to study like uh, some weird course. You know, like he doesn't even have to really br bring it up. He's just there to study. Daphne's his high school sweetheart who comes along. Velma's maybe from another state. Shaggy's a local, and of course Scooby. Yeah, who is and Shaggy's dog? Shaggy's dog, or even like, hey, like you could even play it up. Like maybe it's not even Shaggy's dog. It's Shaggy's uh, Shaggy's uncle's dog. And then he just ends up adopting it. There you go. You have this big, great Dane who's everybody's like all afraid of. And then you actually get to know uh, Shaggy. He's actually like the kindest thing in the world. But yeah. like what I would have done is like, well, if you want to play where Velma's kind of like the driving force to bind the group together initially before Fred takes the lead and leads them in direction. Freddy gets accused of something. Velma starts to investigate. Daphne latches in. Shaggy gets rolled in somehow. Um, they, they incorporate Scooby in helping to sniff out things. They clear Freddy's name, and Freddy goes from, like, searching out whatever his degree was before to searching, like, criminology. Like, it, like this event helps. I want to be, uh, be a criminologist so I can investigate things. And they all become, like, these freelance investigators and stuff like that. And there you go. And then, like, Velma, who's, like, very, Velma can play off. Like, she's very smart, but, like, the moment she's actually pressed for something, she locks up. She's, she's very shy. She's very, like, very reserved. Daphne has all these weird skills, and of course, Freddy loves. Freddy, Freddy's the guy who likes to get the cap, get uh, to get the capture, and this is where you can play up. Like he's he's a he's a like a, a like an athlete or something like that, and like like you, he's known for like if his traps doesn't work, he just goes back to what he knows. So it's like, oh, all right, trap didn't work, going for the tackle, <laughs> and you just mm -hmm. play up that. You play up all the things. No, like and again, like a previous show for Scooby uh, Scooby Doo actually had Shaggy and uh, Shaggy and Scooby. They knew horror tropes and stuff like that, but they were always bored by like watching horror mo films and stuff like that. So you could play up that like maybe Shaggy's like uh, like some like really well like will like he helps run a bookstore, but he's he's always like locked into like the uh, horror section and urban legends and stuff like that. And he has all that kind of knowledge, so he knows the stuff. And so when he sees it in the movies, he's just bored. But then he sees it in real life, he's like, that's that. And he he might know this knowledge, but he's kind of like very scared sketchy he's always cautious but he's always willing to step up for his friends they like it's such oh my god and like but velma this show is such a spiteful mean angry show i mean doesn't contribute anything i mean this thing looked like such a shit show going out like i don't know josh what's your opinion on i don't think he's watched it <laughs> I mean, I I have not watched anything about the show other than people reviewing the show. That's not the question. The question was, what's your opinion on Scooby Doo? <laughs> I Scooby -Doo -Doo. I wish they did better. Like, where are you? I don't know how on earth. You, like, I mean, here's the thing: you can shake up the characters and still be the characters, because largely it's all kind of character based, and not necessarily what the fuck they are. Josh. It's, so really, it comes down to like, oh, is your writing OK? Then you should be fine. 
Josh. But for whatever reason, they just shoved in like the most forced shit possible. It's so bad. My question wasn't about Velma. My question was about Scooby Doo. It's that's the show, and there's no Scooby Doo, so they failed. Oh no. <laughs> Josh, have you ever watched an episode of Scooby Doo? I mean, Scooby Doo is in there. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know what your question is, but I'm like, if Scooby's the in there, original yeah, the... series, dude. Yeah, Scooby's in there. Yes. What's your opinion on Scooby Doo, the OG series, the ones from like the 60s and 80s? Oh, that one. Because, man, we're talking about the modern one, goddammit. You can bring up the modern one, too, because there's, like, 50 <laughs> versions of it, too. There's a lot oh. of, There's a lot of versions of Scooby-Doo. Though I think the best one, best version for me is uh, What's New Scooby-Doo? Yeah. I think that's one of my favorite versions. Although, like, of course, the old, like, 70s, 80s cartoons are fucking mint. Classic. Yeah. Like, I mean, what's new? What's New Scooby-Doo is probably the best intro for scooby-doo possible yeah like scooby dooby doo like where are the... you yeah we got some work to do now uh, like, and i'm gonna stop there because i don't want jeff getting hit with a fucking strike and eh, whatever <laughs> uh, but like my honest opinion on this is like it, it's it's hilarious to watch a bunch of so so here's how i know something is bad is when alan says it's bad when efap says it's bad the way I know that something is that extra little spicy version of bad is when my friends who are kind of, well, let's not beat around the bush, communists are bitching about this shit as well. Um, and they're especially bitching about it. Now, I will give Alan credit. Alan watched five minutes of the show and then said it was too bad and then watched EFAP instead. Which is valid. This person didn't even watch about... I had about... to stop, because, like, the, the, you don't understand my ties to, like, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo is something that I watched, like, religiously as a kid. Yeah, it's something that we all grew up with. No, 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 no. You don't understand what I just said there. I yeah. watched it religiously. Religiously like, I watched, as a kid. I, I yeah. watched every episode whenever I got home. I would put it... I, I always tried to get on my way to, like, make sure I could watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I recorded I watched a lot of the movies when I was younger. Like... I loved Scooby Doo as a kid. It's one of it's like one of my childhood things, like Thomas the Tank Engine and Redwall. My other two big things from my childhood, which are, of course, trains and medieval ni medieval mice fighting in, fighting in war, um, which I've oh, now that grown up. A lot. Which, well, it kind of does. Um, but like, I have the whole Redwall series on my on my shelf there. I've watched. Uh, I've got some. Um, I've got the whole Thomas the Tank Engine, like, or sorry, not Thomas the Tank, the Railroad series. I've got, to, I'm going to be ordering here eventually, which is what Thomas the Tank Engine is based on, by mm. Wilbur, uh, by uh, Reverend uh, Wilbur Audrey, who's the creator of the show, and his son. Yeah. Um, and of course, like, I, I want to get like the old Scooby Doo, like season one, two, three, all the old good Scooby Doo's, the Hanna Barbera like, stuff. No, not even just the Hanna Barbera stuff. Like all the Scooby, like the good Scooby Doo stuff that I know about. Like, I get some of the seasons, eventually, and get physical copies and just store them up on a shelf. Because mm -hmm. I got, I got plans to get a couple of old series, anyways. Like, uh, um, a really good example is I'm planning to get TNG. I'm planning to get um, DS9, all of them on D on DVD. I'm planning to get. Uh, Babylon 5, Stargate, Stargate Atlantis. Um, oh, Stargate is so good. Yeah, it is. Stargate um, was... But, but, okay, but, so, brief tangent. Okay. The original movie for Stargate is probably one of the most underrated sci-fi things ever. I don't think it's underrated. I think it's exactly what it was intended to be, and the show is a hundred times better for it. And SG-1 is great. Like, SG-1 is fantastic. Um, Atlantis, Atlantis is, pretty, is, Atlantis is really good, uh, yeah. but Atlantis has a couple stumbling blocks. And, of course, we didn't get to see much of Infinite, so, like, it doesn't matter. Uh, um, I think Infinite went on for, like, three seasons and stopped. I stopped watching Infinite. I didn't like that one as much as the original series. Um, trying to think of something else that I really loved. But, like... I want to get like those things because I have the whole Redwall novel series on my shelf here, and it's it's twenty one books. Yeah, and they're all fantastic. And uh, like, 
And it's as um, Brian Jacques said, um, the, these books aren't just for children. They are for whoever wants to read them. There are things that, there are things in, in there that when I read it, Redwall, the original book, the original Redwall novel way back when, mm-hmm. that when I read it when I was 22. No, when I read it when I was 19, because I got a, I, I got my whole collection when I was 19. Um, no, I got my whole collection when I was 23. I had most of the collection when I was 19. That's what I mean to say. Um, I read, reread the original Redwall. And there are things in there that you don't pick up on as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, like some of the implications of like some of the punishments that happen in the book. Like, yo, they're actually pretty dark. But at the same time, I, I love I love the I love the world. It's such a fantastic, rich, rich and well written world. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate that Brian Jacques passed away almost too soon. He passed away. Well, he passed away when he was like I think eighty. Brian Ooh. Jacques. I gotta look that up now. He was an old. He was an older. He was an older gentleman at this point. Brian Jacques. See, I've been watching. So okay. He passed away when he was 71, uh, 71 in 2011, uh, 2011. Which means I got my full collection. I finished my full collection in 2012, 2013. So when I was 20, 21. So that means I read Red, reread Redwall before then. So it would have been about 19, 20. Yeah. I mean, so I've been so funny that you guys mentioned talking about like old nostalgia based stuff and well, stuff. It's not it's not nostalgia when it's actually well written. OK, older, older stuff. We'll say. Yeah. Um, I've been watching like that 70s shows clips and like older sitcoms because I've been like, oh, like that's a series I've never actually fully watched and stuff like that. And I've also been looking at Last of Us, maybe finish off my Last of Us playthrough and hating my life. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I've just been looking at like a bunch of stuff uh, from nostalgia. I, I, I won't lie, just, like... It just feels like as if stuff back then had more substance. It's not that it had more substance, because um, there are stuff that count, count uh, that have been coming out in recent times that are like really well written and really well directed. Mm-hmm. Um, Andor, House of the Dragon. Those are two really good. But uh, are those exceptions to the rule? I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, I think we're coming up on an upturn here soon, where like people are going to start going back to the old way of writing and directing stuff. Which can help if, us correct the course, but the problem, the uh, the concern that I would have actually more than than anything would be, uh, like the damage to the old IPs that have been done at this point. Star Wars is now a TV t- TV series franchise, oh. and that's if it's lucky. Okay, um, neurotic. <laughs> no, it it has. No, you're 100 percent correct. Like, like it's not even like neuro- Like I've heard neurotic talk about that, but like even I noticed that like when. Mando, uh, Mando season two ended and Boba Fett was coming out and Obi Wan was coming out. I was like, weren't those movies originally? And I yeah. and like it, it kind of like geared my head a little bit. And when I kind of like I didn't pay atten- too much attention to it initially, and then I watched uh, and then I watched that uh, Obi Wan got its own show, and I was sitting there I'm like, oh my god, that is four shows because they had a bunch. They had they had also had Legends of Star Wars and stuff like that happen at the same time. Josh is being quiet because he doesn't know what to talk about with this stuff. Jo- Josh is just uh, um, Josh is happy. He doesn't but pre- you have, he doesn't participate in the culture war stuff. This isn't even culture war. This is just talking about like good good media. This isn't culture war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, but like then you have Andor, which is I, I want to almost say a flash in the pan now. It, like I'm actually going to be like I've, I've sat down. I watched the first three episodes. Holy shit, they're good. I mean, I kind of I want to watch. Obi Wan, I've heard nothing good about it. So, one of the guys that I play Baltech with, that Alan is now participating in, he when Obi Wan was coming out, he said it was probably his favorite show ever. Yeah, for a little bit, and then he hasn't mentioned it since. I the things I hear about Andor is like. It's really good and it's perfect, but I think it's too little, too late. Like I think well, that like I, I think what happened with the Disney TV shows is they rushed them out. Yeah. Uh, mind you, this is also Disney shooting itself in the foot because of Rise of Skywalker, The Last Jedi, and Solo. Well, like here's the thing: is like the solution to those things is you have to either retcon 
I wouldn't say you have to wreck on episode seven, but no. if you wreck on episode seven, that would be better. All right. You, you don't want to start doing that because there are things you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, but like what I mean by Disney shooting themselves in the foot is they produced effectively a disastrous crash of a, of a uh, like Star Wars was a household name. Yeah. And it was the blockbuster movie series like you didn't have to do anything you could still make good money with star wars you mm-hmm. saw it with episode seven you saw it with uh, rogue one yeah and then you had episode eight came out and you had you made almost ha- uh, like uh i think it was like like by the time you from episode seven to episode nine you lost because i think the first one made a billion dollars yeah and, the, and the, the third the ninth one made a billion dollars. You managed to lose a billion, billion dollars in revenue. revenue in five years. Well, five. the funny thing is, is like, okay, so here's how I know episode eight is bad. Josh. Yes. Would you say Apple's episode eight is good of Star Wars? Episode eight. This is my uh, favorite story, by the way. I'm trying to remember what the hell eight is. It's the last show. Uh, the okay it's it it's the it's the the, one where the girl shoots a ship into other ships oh right where she shoots once and kills three fighters and with one shot yeah yeah uh so it's her first time shooting that thing too it is legit canonically the first time she shoots that thing i do like the that movie for just simply being a Something being that last moment of shooting the ship at the other ship. I'm like, that's great. That's but wonderful. Then also, the moment you actually yeah, start to think about it. Yeah, then you start to think about it and go, why didn't the freaking anyone else do this before? Uh, I'm like, if this is so successful. Uh, what, makes it, what makes it really funny for me is like, I was sitting there. I'm like, no, that would happen. That happens. Yeah, that would happen. And then I'm like, I'm on my way home. I'm like, I don't know if that would work. And then I and then I reread because uh, the, they're actually like hyperspace rams have happened before. Yeah. In yeah. old in old canon. Um, and what happened in old canon? I actually had to look this up because technically ramming is a is a, v- a viable strategy in old Star Wars lore, because if you're moving slow enough, the shields won't stop you, so you will actually like hit and grind against ships and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you rammed at hyperspace, you know what happens? The people at hyperspace just die. Yeah. They cease to be. <laughs> yeah. They cease to be, and the only thing that can actually like, like they ran. Actually, no, they don't even. That doesn't even happen. They're in a subplane existence. So for you to hit them at speed, you would have to have, like taken off all your safeties. And if that had been like a thing, like and then doing that actually adds uh, other risks. So what it was in the old lore is technically jumping and deaccelerating while jumping and coming out like right on top of something. All it would do is hit the shields and just shatter your ship. And you're dead. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas old ramming was like it was actually like you could actually have ships that were coming out of hyperspace at such a short at such a close range that no matter what the opponent was doing, they were ramming. You were going to be ramming them. And that was actually like something that was really viable, uh, viable tactic during the Battle of Coruscant, where like Republic ships were like entering system. And the CIS were like, well, we got to deal with that. So ships would drop out of hyperspace right on top of a Star Destroyer and ram it to destroy it. So it's like, oh, hey, yeah, that's really smart. And, like, it's not they, – they're coming through at hyperspace speeds. They're coming out, dropping only, like, maybe 150 meters away from a starship and then crashing into it at speed. And it's really – it was really well thought out. But then you have, of course, what happens in Last Jedi. And technically what you have – it happens in, uh, in uh, Rise of Skywalker, too. You see it in, the, in, like, the last seconds of the movie, too, where, like, you see a Star Destroyer has been – bifurcated by another one of those blasts which means another kamikaze pilot did that attack which means the one in a million sh- uh one uh one in a million shot that poe tries to use as a cover for it meaning it's like it's statistically impossible to happen um in in effectively two years you've seen it to happen twice which means uh it's it, that's not the number um it, that means it's a significantly higher number which begs a lot of questions logistical questions um, something for me that actually has been a bit of a bother for Star Wars, and this is the reason why I want to watch Andor, and why I'm really happy with the way Andor is going. 
um, the Empire has been kind of like relegated to being like a non-threat. Mm -hmm. Where like stormtroopers can't aim. Um, you've got like where the Empire is just completely incompetent. And I'm just like, you, you want your Empire to be a threat. You want them to be competent enough that when you're when your good guys win, they win. Like, it's an earned victory. It's the reason why I hate that scene in season one of Mandalore, uh, Mandalorian, where, like, you see the two sp uh, scout bikers trying to shoot a rock, and neither of them can hit. And what I would have done if I had been in charge of that scene, I would have had the younger guy, the guy who, like, initially starts shooting, being, like, missing, and the other guy being like, what's wrong with you? Picks picks up the blaster, he looks at it, he's like, how are you not hitting that? You're scoped. Well, I, I'm a... I'm, I'm a so and so from X planet. Oh, you're a conscript. And then the other guy blasts and blows apart the rock. He's like, "All right, so I'm going to teach you how to properly shoot when we get back to base." And you play it. You play that up. Like, no, the the Empire has competent soldiers. It's like, the Empire wouldn't have existed if they didn't have competent soldiery, which is the problem with a lot of the uh, other stuff. Like, even in like Rebels, Rebels they kind of like play it up with a little bit more trap the kitty like. But the Empire is still very capable. Like. They tend to brute force their way through things, but when they get subtle, they're still quite scary and stuff like that. And the problem is with Mandalore and Obi-Wan and Boba Fett, they're all just kind of a thing that just happens. And it's actually kind of annoying because, like, the Empire is unironically one of my favorite factions in Star Wars. Same with the, same with the Grand Republic, same with the, uh, the Alliance to restore, uh, to restore, restore the Republic, same with the Confederation of Independent Systems. I had, like... There are so many things that go wrong with the series as a result because of Disney's, like, direction. But it's whatever now. Um, yeah, uh, and this this is, this conversation is all spawned from me talking about Velma and, like, fucking nostalgia. And we're, and we're, we're, we're happier about that stuff than this fucking show. No, I'm not happy about that shit. Like, we <laughs> prefer the Star Wars stuff. No. No, I don't. We can hate both equally. No, I let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. We prefer the old canon of the old stuff to yes, anything you new. Prefer, you prefer the good written stuff. Well, old Star Wars had its slop, too. We have yeah. the prequels. To, we have the prequels as a good example of that. Even though the prequels I don't are, think the prequels are that bad. <laughs> they aren't as... It, it's it's the thing of... Uh, it's that they were pretty like, bad in the early no, no, 2000s. No, they, they are bad. They are objectively bad. Like, you actually sit down and, like, think about how the plot and how everything happens. There's a lot of contrivances and a lot of things that just, like, in the writing and, like, set design doesn't work very well. Um, but the problem is that um, they are leagues better than 789. And I do mean 789. Like, 7 seven's passable on first watch, but the moment you actually, like, sit down what? and start to, like, pay attention to the things that happen, it kind of starts to fall apart really quickly. I, I would say... Um, I would say episode 1, 2, and 3... Are all like threes and fours and fives across the board, okay? Um, and that's that's me being a little bit generous because I one one is four, uh, no one is one is a five, four is a four, uh, two is a four, and three is a six, because even amongst the even for me even amongst the sequels, or the the main the main trilogy the OG series, yeah. um, episode seven or episode six, my favorite of them only ranks an eight yeah. episode not episode five ranks a nine and episode four ranks an 8.5 like that's how tight for me that is whereas like the prequels are pretty spread out there's then i have of course rogue one at seven i think rogue one's fine it just has a it, it just it, it is a movie that would have been better as a show yeah but, but that's whatever um it, disney but, wasn't doing that at the time um, but like, anyways, I back to what I was going to say was I was going to say that, like, since episode seven, eight, nine come out, I would say that those scores all jumped by at least one no. point. Solid. No. no. So instead of like instead of like episode four or episode one being a three, it's now a four to me. Instead of uh, episode. If that's how you're. If that's how you're looking at those movies, then you probably shouldn't be um, looking at it like that. For me, like uh, one, two, three have always been pretty low. Even mm -hmm. though I think three is fairly okay, it has problems. But uh, she's lost the will to live. Um, fucking dumb line. Um, but there are episodes like for me, they've always been low. 
and the more you like look back at like the sequel trilogy and stuff like that, it, they mm-hmm. they're they're very poorly written. They have very bad directional decisions. They have like an incoherent pl- uh, plot thread through all of them. Um, the universe building is just not a thing. Yeah. Um, but that's uh, that's like even in episodes uh, in episode three, it has some of the best Star Wars world building. Like episodes four, five, uh, four, five, and six do have world building, but it's all part of the plot. Whereas in episode three, you get the myth of Darth Darth Plagueis. That is major world building. That's a story related to the world that we've never heard before, and it's so well done that like it's it's a meme. It's a meme. Have you ever heard the story of the da- of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Of course you haven't. It's not something the Jedi would teach you. And it's such a like like it's a meme now um, because it's so memorable and like you don't have like any like interesting me- memorabilia or like world building related to Star Wars of uh, mm-hmm. seven eight nine. Um, yeah, but again, we're this is spawning out of Velma. And I want to move on to the next topic. Velma's bad. Don't watch it. Don't even hate watch it. If you're gonna hate watch it, go fucking pirate it first. Talk. Um, let's talk about another f- thing what, that we you, hate what, nowadays. What did you? What do you want to talk about now, Jeff? Um. Well, there's a new binocle. It's a gift. I have to spend a hundred bucks. Uh, to get it. Uh, Alan, do you want anything for the Lego store? Huh? No. Okay. Never mind. Well, okay. <laughs> hang on. Let me let me look at this. Did you post? Hey, I'm, make, I'm gonna a run, and Wars I'm also going to the. the, the... <laughs> I'm going to the liquor store and Lego store. Need anything? Yeah, pretty much. That seems like kind of what I need. Said, um, <laughs> we need a good laugh. Um, no, nah, this other topic is a little bit more distressing, uh, a little bit more upsetting, and uh, yeah, there's no way of being around the bush. Three for three industries will no longer make Halo games, but oversee the license. This spawns out of the recent turn of events that have been hitting the tech industry as a whole, uh, including uh, people I might have worked with in the past um, at Amazon, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, basically, tech is exploding. Uh, What's going on? To say. Uh, massive tech layoffs due to the economy. Um, oh, yeah, that... We all kind of saw that coming, though. That's yeah, been, that was coming a mile away. Uh, we, we've known that for like a year and a half now that that was coming. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything has hit EA yet, so I really don't have to help people job hunt, but that would be... You might be job in... hunting. What? Uh, remember, you are a contract worker. No, I'm not. Oh, so you you are m- even more on the chopping block because you've only been working there for, what, two years? I don't work at EA anymore. Where do you work right now? I will send it to you later. Okay. I I am still on the chopping block. Let's not deny that. But again, I work for you, a smaller you company. Remember, so. like, you got to remember, like, you got to help people look at. No, you got to start looking to like out for yourself right now, like, dude. You've got to prep to like be ready to be like hunting. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. Um. But uh, 343 Industries will no longer make Halo games, but will oversee outside development of Halo. Um, So they finally make a good Halo game, arguably. Oh, yeah, this shit's happening. Right. They finally make a campaign that's actually worth playing. They finally fucking actually do something good with the franchise that they've been given. Because 4 was trash. Five was okay, but five was trash. Five was how do I put it? The Call of Dutyfication of Halo. Uh, And if they had made it, if they had done something different, where they were like, "Hey, we're gonna do ancient human Halo instead of Halo Five, and then just do parallels with Master Chief and Locke," that would have been cool. Where it's like, oh, you go back in time and you're playing as like a Spartan of the original human generation. That would have been cool. They didn't do that. Uh, four was complete until it doesn't make any sense in the actual scheme of things. Um, so Halo 5, they basically got somebody back who actually wrote Halo, Jason Stain, who arguably wrote one of the best Halo games of all time, or Halo stories of all time in Halo ODST. 
Um, and they made Halo Infinite, which is actually um, pretty decent. Good, good story. Fun story. Uh, Green Man go shoot things. Multiplayer needs fixing, but yeah. we've been saying that for a couple months now. Yeah, that's getting I think better. I think I think we've been saying that it's like, it's like almost Close since like month two. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I started complaining about that in February. Holy shit. It, it, you it, almost a full year now. Yeah, you and everyone else. And they started and it's actually getting better now. I can say that. Oh, I can. I believe that. But like I have I have too um, many things on my board to go back to play. And... Yeah, um, basically oh, yeah. Uh, right now they basically counseled couch co-op, which basically infuriated everyone. They basically started doing a bunch of stuff. And uh, it looks like certain infinity is going to take over the franchise actual development. For the time being on Halo Infinite. Um, there's no talk about whether or not this is going to affect campaign DLC, so it's kind of a shitty situation, per We're se. We're going to see, I guess. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. You know, uh, I, I have to... I think that the first time I heard about yeah. the, the whole thing with 343 three, three was, I think, Twitter... Or, or no yeah i think it was no it was reddit reddit was a little bit of a blaze because they're like oh they're just stop for, they're gonna stop making shit for this game aren't they they're just gonna stop entirely and people kind of freaking out and then there was like a press release from 343 saying no nah, we're still developing it just it's a lot old slower and you're like Halo okay. and Master Chief are here to stay. 343 Industries will continue to develop Halo for now and in the future, including epic stories, multiplayer, and what makes Halo great. Uh, Pierre Hintas, studio head. So this isn't Frank O'Connor. This isn't Bonnie Ross. This isn't Jason Staten. This is somebody else entirely. Uh, Jason Staten apparently left to go back to... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Xbox Industries, if that makes sense. Mm. So he is back at Xbox for uh, uh, time being, which means he'll probably come back and do some development when things go back to the way they should be. Um, or he will just write the Halo stories, which was, to be honest, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, there has been a lot of stuff done per se with Halo Infinite's development um, as of late. I think the winter update has been very solid. Season 2 um, is fine. It's fine. Serviceable. It's okay. Um... The thing that kind of makes me upset about it is uh, people are losing their job, which always sucks. And uh, everyone's now messaging me at, saying, hey, you play Halo Infinite. What's your opinion on this? And it's like, yeah, my opinion on this is it's very tragic and upsetting. Um, I actually kind of enjoyed the gameplay. I actually enjoy how it runs. And yeah, that's my opinion. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Does anyone else have a opinion on the game or anything like that? Or eh, it's just a fluctuation period in tech industry, I guess. Yeah, it, 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 this is to me. This is a sign that the tech industry, and let's let's be honest here. I think the entertainment industry as well has been very inflated and doesn't have the best people at the helm right now um go ahead really does not yeah like you look at somebody like ubisoft and they're saying they're canceling projects left right and center and then they're saying they're going to their employees say you need to do more work and you need to be better and it's like yeah that's uh we're so doing that NFT thing. Don't worry. Yeah. We're what? totally doing it. What yeah. the fuck did I come back to? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so Talk like, about sh we're shitty we're companies. I'm tying this oh. into like greater layoffs and stuff like that. So what's happening with Halo Infinite is like just... It's tragic. They lost apparently one third of their workforce, according to a bunch of people. Um, there was a big, massive concern of... Uh, how do I say this? There's a big concern that campaign co-op was gone. 
Ah. Um, forever. So everyone was just done. Like, campaign was no longer going to be developed. Um, this is more of a wait and see. If that makes sense. Um, but it seems like as if the larger industry as a whole is just... Well, I don't want to say larger industry. So it seems to me like the tech industry and a lot of like the corporations of late are just going through a massive transition. And it's uh, kind of interesting to kind of see. So here's hoping that everything works. Yep. Do you have anything else to talk about this week? No. Let's call it there. We could talk about Bionicles, but I don't think anyone wants to talk about Bionicles. I, I remember Bionicles as a kid, but that's about it. I don't want to talk about modern Bionicles because they do not look like Bionicles. Actually, I'll send Josh something and then... Actually, I think I already sent it to Josh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. Josh, what do you think of this cute picture? This beautiful picture. It's amazing. Uh, the best picture. It? And it's not of, a, it's oh. not of the girl from Pokemon. Scarlet. Uh, it's Doom Slayer as a uh, anime girl uh, showing midriff and just decapitated a gremlin. Uh, imp. But yeah, imp. Yeah. So we're gonna go off. We're gonna play Magic the Gathering or something. I don't well, know. I'm going to bed because I got. Alan's going to bed because he's a sleepy head. No, I got class tomorrow and stuff. Alan's going to bed because he's an adult. Uh huh. Josh is probably going to play Magic the Gathering. I'm probably also going to play Magic the Gathering. Thank you for listening to the Black My Guys podcast. Fuck you. Have a good night. <laughs>